Hello. We are uh, here again. Uh, you know, it might seem familiar if you watched my video on my channel, but uh, yeah. Um, took a little break after I recorded my video against the B Man. So uh, now we're on to week 10 predictions. It was good to do them, you know? Uh, I mean, we haven't really done content that much this season, and I think that's the one thing Season 3's been lacking is the content. I think the games have been stellar. I think the coaches have been great. I think the Discord's been popping. We've been missing the content, and I'm here to fix that. Last week, I amended it. This week, we're here again, once again, everybody. Now, I have some food next to me, so if I'm eating during this, I don't care. You're going to have to deal with it. I'll try not to eat like a cow, and I'll try to mute my mic when I can, but you're going to have to deal with it. Um, But, uh, yeah, so uh, without wasting too much of y'all's days, let's uh, get on into it. Of course, the proud non-official league sponsor, these parents, Um, again, I don't care. I mean, B didn't ask me to do this. I'm just doing it myself. Um. But, yeah, the honey, like, bro, when I'm telling you, like, you can literally just get, like, a spoonful or a fingertip full of honey and just eat that shit, bro. I'm, bro, I'm telling you, the honey is worth it, bro. I'm telling you. You guys need to invest into the beast. The M&D honey stocks, man. It's, it's beyond words how good it is. I wasn't really, like, I never really ate honey growing up, but... Now that I have it in my life, I can't get rid of it. So, yeah. The unofficial sponsor of Big Juice Bee's Parents. Anyway, I said I was going to waste your time, and here I am talking about Bee's Parents again. But here we go. Into the video. First game of the week, me versus Chris. Uh, last time we played, I got a little lucky towards the end. Uh, he missed a Giga Impact for the kill. Again, I, I've said it a lot, and I'm going to repeat it again just because this is the predictions video. Did he beat me 100% if he hit? No. Did he lose if he 100% missed? Yes. That was the conundrum. And uh, our team's a little bit different now. Um, I guess I should pull up this as well. Um, the last time we played, Chris had Smeargle, Darm, and Cresselli on his team. And, uh, I believe I was the first victim of Palafin Normal. I could be wrong. I, I He did it really early into the season, so I'm not sure. But, yeah. Uh, he definitely had Palafin Normal the last time he played. But now he has Meowscarada, Moltres, and Frostmoth. So, and I now have, what, I have Lipard, I have Weezing, and I have Tornadus. So those are the trades that differentiate this matchup a bit. Um, I mean, I'll just say it because I used it last time and I can't use it this time. But me not having Gengar is definitely unfortunate because now I don't have an immunity to Palafin's Boom Burst or Giga Impact potentially. Uh, that's just a very obvious one because my uh, Nasty Pot sub Gengar put in a lot of work the last time we played. I literally swapped him game two with it. So that's good news for Chris. Uh, but yeah, uh, obviously when it comes to my games, I can't really get too much into it because I'm on playing it and I can't really spoil much. So yeah, uh, who do I think is going to win? I think obviously me. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously going to be biased for myself. You know what I mean? So, but to say this isn't going to be another potential game of the season is an understatement. I think Chris has been playing exceptionally well this season. I think he's a great, great team. Um, but yeah, it, it's me, so obviously I'm going to think I'm going to win. It's just that plain and simple. Don't have to explain it much, but yeah. Um, and obviously for Chris, he thinks he's going to win, but I think me and Chris can both agree this is probably going to be a game three set of the season potential. It's going to be a really good game. Really, really good game. Because um, I think the trades we both made make this matchup a lot more interesting. And I'm really excited to see how we've both grown since we played week four. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, if you've been paying attention to the schedule at all, you can tell that week 
10 was the same as the week 2 matches, and week 4 matches are the same as the week, or no. Was it week 8? Yeah, we're in week 10. So yeah, week 2 matches are the same as week 10, or the same as week 8. 4 is the same as 10, and then 6 is the same as 12. And 12 is the last game, the divisional games of the season. The last two weeks, 13, 14, not divisional games. So at that point, you pretty much use making playoffs, and who isn't? So yeah. Uh, anyway, back onto it. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to win. I think, again, cassette of the season caliber type of game. Me and Chris are literally, as of right now, because Chris still hasn't played Noah yet, uh, the two games from week nine that haven't been played is Wu and Noah, or Wu and Mnaz and Chris and Noah. But again, I'm not really going to wait for them because they can play their games during this week. It's whatever. I'm not going to force them. But content's got to come out when content's going to come out. Uh, I got two jobs, so uh, yeah, I don't really have the time to do these, so when I have the time to do them, I uh, gotta do them. So uh, yeah, it's just how it is. So yeah, um, obviously I think I'm gonna win, Chris thinks he's gonna win, it, it, it's just that simple, uh, not really much to say. One thing I will say is if I beat Chris, two things happen, which is very important for me. One, I uh, guarantee clinch division. Because if I go up 5-0, uh, Chris and or Wu cannot reach me no matter what. And if I uh, also beat Chris, I'm not 100% guaranteed. But the odds of me clinching first seed for playoffs is near 100%. Um, hold on, I have to just... Uh, let me, sorry, just had a couple of messages I had to the, the, the respond to, but if you can see, uh, Croc is five and four and Tanner is also five and four. Where is he? Yeah, he's five and four. Croc played his game, right? Uh, just sure. Week nine. Yeah, he played JC. Okay. So Tanner and Croc, both five and four. So theoretically, I could lose out. You know what I mean? Like, I could go 10-4. and four. That's a very real possibility. Do I think that's going to happen? No, obviously not. But mathematically speaking, if I were to lose out and they were to win out, we would have the same record. Uh, the question then becomes, do they overtake my differential? Croc very easily could if I were to lose out. He's plus 21. He he's half of my differential, and he has four losses. So Croc, you'd very easily take the number one spot if you were to win division and win out. Tanner, not so much. Uh, he is, where is Tanner? He's plus five. So, um, yeah, even if he were to win out his games, there's really no way he would take my differential. So, yeah, uh, if I am to beat, if I am to beat Chris, I am 100% guaranteed clinch for playoffs because I won out my division, so I'm a division leader. Uh, and then I would say probably like a 99.9% .9 odds of clinching first seed. So there's that. Good news for me. Uh, yep. I like that. I like that a whole lot. Uh, so yeah, maybe that fires up Chris a little bit more to do a little bit more prep for me. I don't know, but I figured that out about like 30 minutes ago when I was walking my dog. So I thought it would be cool to mention in the video because I would be the first team to clinch playoffs. I mean, very obviously I'm the top team in the league, undefeated. So obviously I'm going to do it a lot faster than most people. But I just think it'd be funny that I would do it a month before. You know what I mean? Like the last month of my season would pretty much just be for fun at that point, which. I mean, I guess it makes sense because I worked very hard to get here, but you know what I mean? It's just funny. I just find it funny. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. So, anyway, on to the next set. We got that wussy versus that new. Um, So, Wu right now is 4-4. Four and four. He won the, his first four games, and he lost the next four, and now he plays Mnaz. Um, obviously, don't know what Wu's going to do. Don't know anything about that matchup. Um, but I, regardless of how that game goes against Mnez, I'm just going to skip over it. Regardless how that game goes, I think Wu, the crazy thing is, like, he's still very well in the playoff race, right? Um, I need, I need 
do this. Hold on. I need to copy this. I need to stop pulling it from my Discord in case I get random messages. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to like anyone's messages. That's kind of fucked up. Uh, so let's do this. Paste. Do comic sans. Oh god, this is so fucking ugly. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh let's at least do double space. Yep. So yeah. Um Wu is not out of the playoff race at all, because as of right now, me and Croc are the division leaders, and then in playoffs it would be Chris as the number three seed, because he's the top seed that didn't win a division. And then he's still ahead of Tanner. If he were if he used to beat MS, he's still ahead of Tanner. If he loses MS, Tanner would overtake him there. Um, but yeah. Wu is very much in the playoff race still. He had a rough mid season, but again, because his beginning of the season was so strong, very, very easily can make like an end season comeback and do it. You know and I mean like that's the good thing about starting strong is you can have a bad mid season like Wu's having, but still make a comeback in the end. So Wu very, very much so in the playoff race. Him and Tanner are like neck and neck. Um, it's just a battle of the mentals. Tanner won his game. Re he started to win games again recently. Croc, or not Croc, but Tan or Tanner. Jesus Christ, my brain. Wu, not too much. Whether he beats Emnaz or not, again, I think he's going to beat New. Um, again, what was it last time they played? What was the score? Go to week four. It was a uh, 2-0, and he got plus six again. I think News having a really rough season. Uh, last week he got re like last night actually he got kind of ran at by Necrozma. Uh, his mental definitely is probably not at the highest I would say in the league. And I think if Wu were to lose to Emnez, I think this is a good mental reset for him. It gives him a win that he really needs, and can catapult him into another winning streak towards the end of the season make a good end of the season run so i think this is a really big game for woo uh even if it's quote unquote free i wouldn't like, again new beat nick so i mean he has that win under him he just needs to find some more consistency but for woo this is a good game for him to rebound his mental find his place find his foothold again and make a good end of the season run and beat out tanner for playoffs so I got high hopes for Wu. Uh, next up, Tanner versus Nick. Um, how what was this last time? It was actually really close. Yeah, because I remember Tanner was. I don't know. Tan, I don't know what Tanner was doing. Uh, Nick obviously new to the league. Uh, I don't know how he. I, I'll be honest. I don't know how he made the game so close the last time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, until Nick can really really learn the game which at this point probably won't be this season maybe season four we can really start nick to see be a more of a competitor but i have to give it to tanner i think it's gonna be a 2-0 um i'd be very surprised if nick took a game off him i'd be very i'd be very impressed i mean honestly last time they played he very well could have uh just a couple things went wrong but uh yeah uh i think nick just based on the last time they played, I think very well could win this set, which would be a crazy upset. But uh, I don't. I think Tanner, with the trades that he made, and now having sticky webs, I think this will be a good first game for him to utilize the Vika Volt, get used to it, see what it's good against, see what it's bad against, start getting. I think this is a good game for Tanner to test out his new team, and showcase what the strengths are. I think this is a good game for Tanner to really start building up that steam going into the end of the season. Uh, so, yeah. Croc versus Chase. This is an interesting one because the last time they played, Chase won, but it was an extremely close set. Really cl One differential in a game three. Like, that that's like a game. That's a set of the season caliber game. If I were, like, I don't think any. I think me and M was, was the only other game that did that. And Chris and Tat, yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. So, uh, again, very, very high caliber set. Uh, really good set. This was also the first week Chase got all of his new team members, where he got his Season 2 squad with Whimsicott, Primarina, 
and of the such. So Croc, as the new guy in the league, really got blindsided by this. Now that he's seen Chase's team over the past couple weeks and how it's evolved and how he sees how Chase likes to play with these members, I think Chase is Chase doesn't have that flashbang to hit him with anymore. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, Chase doesn't have that thing. He Chase doesn't have the surprise factor to rely on going into the set, and I think that's big. And I think like I know Chase won the last time, right? But I think. Because of the reason Croc had no idea what Chase wanted to do with his mons, and now he's had like like two months to basically see Chase's team and how it like has evolved, I think Croc has a very good chance of winning this game. However, 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 Chase's last three weeks he played me, he played Tanner, and he played Josh. Our game, very close, should have won. Game against Tanner, trolled his brains out. Not not really a game. It's game against Josh. Pop the fuck off and won a big game. As you can see, this is kind of a pattern here. Every other set, he does good. Every other set, he does bad. Does he break that? Does he break that pattern? I don't know. But uh, if Chase keeps playing the way he did against me and Josh, I think Chase can win this game. However, however, if Chase goes back to the Chase of old, I think Croc has the knowledge of what his team wants to accomplish now and with that knowledge he can stop Chase's team's strategy. So this is tough. This is tough. Um but for no reason other than Chase won the last time, I want See, this is tough cuz I want Croc to win cuz he lost to Chase last time, right? Are you not no so actually, you know what, Chase? I know Croc is doing better than you, right? But I want Croc to win for two reasons. One, you know what? No, no, no. I, fuck, what do I do? I want, okay. I'll explain my reasoning for why I said what I said, but I want Croc to win because two reasons. One, it keeps pace with Tanner, so it keeps the playoff race more interesting between the two teams and their division. And two, he lost to Chase last time, so... Let's 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 see if he can beat Chase this time. You know what I mean? But I want Chase to win because one, uh, he's kind of like the underdog going into this game. Like yeah, he beat him last time, but his record is a lot worse. Uh, uh, three and six. So if he wins this, it would give him another divisional win, which would put him at two and three. And. While he can no longer win division, most likely, because if Tanner beats if Tanner beats Nick, then Chase can't win division no matter what. Um, but so Chase right now he's in a very prime position to take like a second like one of the seeds in playoffs because if he beats Croc, he's like let's look at Chase's schedule right. He plays Croc, so if he wins that, he's four and six. He then plays New, who's very struggling. So that's probably one from. So he's five and six. He then plays Nick in his last divisional game, which is another team that's really struggling. So Chase probably hits six and six. He's now finally at neutral. In his last two weeks, he plays JC and he plays Wu. JC, great coach. He beat Croc last. But you know what? Like it's JC, right? One of the greatest coaches of Big Juice history. Just not having a good season. But the issue I have going into this matchup is that JC might not even make playoffs. So if he doesn't make playoffs, he might not see this game as important, which would give Chase like a free win. Because JC doesn't make playoffs, the game doesn't matter to him. So that's a big game for Chase there. And then this game against Wu. If Wu is still in the race for playoffs, he's obviously going to try, right? But if he's no longer in the race for playoffs, then Chase has a, like another free game. So Chase goes from being three and six to what? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Chase is in like a very, very prime position to go eight and six and snag a playoff spot like that. But again, it all starts with this game against Croc. And I know I have Croc winning, but this is a set of the season caliber. This is going to be a banger of a set. 
I this is the set I'm most excited to watch. Has major, major playoff implications for both teams. Major, major playoff implications for both teams. And I'm very excited. Uh, next up, we got the last minute Linusies versus the Manchester Missing Nose. Um, only difference in this set, I believe, is Mnez now has Comfe instead of Weezing. And I think Noah had all of his trades the last time he played Mnez. So, for the only thing changing in this matchup is the Comfe. And does Comfe come? I don't know. It, it's just whatever Emma has got cooking up. I haven't really talked so much about the matchup. So, yeah. Uh, this is a big game. Noah, as you can see, not doing great in the division, but in the league, he's been doing really good. Uh, Emnez, he's in a weird spot. Because whoever wins the match between Tabs and B in their divisional game is in a very good spot to steal Emnez if he were to lose to Noah. If Emnez beats Noah, it puts the pressure on... Who's Emnez's last divisional game? He plays B. So, if B... I'm trying to think. If... If B were to beat Tabs and then beat Emnez and Emnez were to lose out... B could take the division leader spot, and same for Tabs. Well, no. Tabs would have to beat Noah and Emnez. Or Tabs would have to beat B and Noah, but he would need Emnez to lose to B. So, basically what I'm saying is it's in... Because Tabs has to rely on T M B beating Emnez, but B has to rely on himself beating Emnez. So, for the sake of an argument, B is in a better position to overtake the division leader at the end of the season... Because um, it's in his control if he beats Emnez or not. Tabs has to rely on someone else, you know what I mean? So this is getting down to the wire here. Because if Emnez doesn't clinch playoffs, if he doesn't clinch division, I don't know if he makes playoffs. Because, like, what's his record? He's 4-4 four and four at plus 12, so his differential's good. And he's got, like, he's standing neutral at record. But, I mean... You gotta look at the division leaders, right? You got I think Josh is leading his division, I could be wrong. He's tied with Preston, but he has a better record. So yeah, Josh is a division leader, so he's guaranteed playoff spot. And then whoever wins out their division, so it could be B, Tabs, or Mnez, we don't know yet. Then Noah is most likely for sure making it. And then Preston is there as well. Preston now been having a rough towards the end of the season. We don't know if he's going to bounce back or not. But as of right now, the playoffs is Josh, Noah, Preston, and then whoever wins out and that's his division. So unless Preston starts choking, uh, Tabs, B, and Mnaz are all in a really, really close race for playoffs, which I'm excited for. I think it's really good. Um, but let me see. Who, uh, who won? What was it? 2-0-3. Good set. It was close. Uh, but for the sake, for the sake of making playoffs very interesting, I think I, no matter what, I think it's going to be game three this time. I really don't think that it doesn't. But for the sake of spicing things up very crazy, I want, I'll just do this. For the sake of spicing things up very crazily, I want Amnaz to lose to Noah, and I want B to beat Tabs. Because, again, like I said earlier, it's very in B's control, more than Tabs, to win the division leader. Because he plays Amnaz, so if he beats Tabs and then Amnaz, he wins the division, he clinches playoffs. Tabs, he has to beat B, but then rely on B to beat Amnaz, which isn't, it's not a feasible thing, like it's out of his control. The B is in a very prime position to win division if Mnes were to lose to Noah. Now, if B were to now if Mnes beats Noah and then B beats Tabs, it's B still has a chance of winning division. At that point, it would just come down to differential. So, but B, I think B's differential is a lot worse than Mnes's. 
Yeah. So B would really need to end this to start losing a lot of games to get that differential down, or else B wouldn't make playoffs because they'd be tied, but the differential difference would be the tiebreaker. You know what I mean? So B needs MS to lose, and ta and B needs to win against Tabs to put himself in a very prime position to take division. Tabs, again, I don't want to count him out. Tabs needs to beat B, and then he needs B to beat Emnez. So yeah. So yeah, for the sake of this division getting really spicy, this is what I'm hoping for. I don't care about matchup. We saw this matchup before. You know what I mean? Like we see, like team preview. Like, I th did B. Well, I guess there's one thing I gotta check. Did B have his new team against Tabs last time? Is the question. He did. Okay, so he did have Sneasler. Okay. So yeah. So nothing really much changes this matchup because yeah, both their teams are the same. So yeah, it's the same matchup as before. It's just who who's the better team. Uh. So yeah. That, again, for the sake of making things really spicy, I really want to see these results. I really want to see these results. So, yeah. Uh, moving on to the last division. I think they're the Ruby division or the Sapphire division. I I forget the division names, but uh, they exist. Because my division is the Pearl. This is the Diamond then this is Ruby, and then that's Saf yes, yeah, so the Sapphire Division in the Hoenn Conference. Not that we've ever even named, like, not that no one even calls them by that names, but you know what I mean. Uh, we got JC versus Preston. Uh, this matchup changes a lot because they both have different Megas now, and uh, yeah, Preston made a lot of changes that I don't agree with. Uh, he won his first game against Josh very convincingly, and then like the next three games, he did really piss poor. So Preston, his team's on the drop off. JC got a big win against Croc last week, uh, and now he's in a really big divisional game against Preston. Um, as much as JC's been like a quiet low end team this season, he's still very much well in the playoff race. He's tight, like, yeah, he can't win out division like B can, so that's like the one downside that JC has. But if he were to win out and go, he's five and four, so he'd be five and five. So if he goes nine and five, like, if he wins out, like he's very much in the playoff race. So, um, it was a big game for sure. Um, it's just a matter of does JC have the tools that he needs to stop. Basque Legion. And I think JC's good. You know what? Like JC's good in prep. He 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 can be tricky. So I definitely think JC has something cooked up. Uh what it is, I don't know. I mean, I know. I have an idea, but obviously I don't want to say anything. I don't want to spoil the matchup, but I think for the sake of argument, I think Preston's new team is really not good. I you can make the Mianxiao trade, and you can make the Thunderous trade. That's fine. But dropping Beedrill, or dropping Scizor for Beedrill, is not it, Chief. Your team is so hyper-offensive now that you have, like, no bulk. You have double Heatran and Pelipper as your three defensive mods, and everything else is, like, HO. I can't, I can't back that. Basket Legion shorts are a little bulky. Man, Shao has a generator, so yeah. But you lost all your bulk for all this offense, and only one game has proven that it's worked out. So until Preston can prove me wrong again, I have JC win in this game. Uh, do I, no, I don't. I don't think it'll be a two. -up. I mean, okay. So JC's every game this season has actually been a two-game set, whether he's won or lost. So actually, I'll say two-zero for the sole reason that JC has not been to a game three this entire season. So. That's the only reason I'm saying it's going to be a two-game set because uh, JC hasn't been to Game 3 this year. So, yeah. Yeah, no, he hasn't been to Game 3. Yeah, so for the sole reason that JC hasn't been to Game 3, I think he's going to, I think he's going to be 2-0. But very well could be Game 3. Just we'll have to see how it plays out. Last game of the week. 
Josh versus Biff. I believe Josh beat him the last time, but it was kind of close. 2-0, four differential, pretty close. Um, the matchup changes a little bit this time because uh, Biff no longer has to tighten. He has iron treads, and Josh... Not that he's really been using uh, Primeape a whole lot, but he now has Primeape instead of Lipard. Will this be the game we see the mouse? No one knows. Uh, I hope we see it at some point. But uh, yeah. Uh, he, Josh won last time, so kind of have to give him the, the, the you know, gotta, gotta, gotta give him the little edge there. But I think because they're boys, they're both the boys from the British. And they're both homies. Probably not, they've been. I think they're IRL friends. So it's a very competitive game between the two of them. Uh, I think this will be a really, really good game. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the only thing that's interesting to me is if he brings Pink Kirchin, even though Josh has Iron Walls. That would be the very interesting thing. I who knows what he's cooking up, but uh, yeah. Uh, but for the sole reason that I. We have teams like press. We have teams like uh, JC, and we have teams like Chase that are making the come up towards the end of the season for the sole reason that. Well, I guess it's not the sole reason, but for two reasons: that one, I want to see the lower end teams start to beat the top end teams, and two, I want to see. Uh, what is it? I want to see teams that lost last time win. We'll give this to my man Biff. Josh has had a little rocky of a season. The games he's won have been really, really close, but the games he's lost have been, like, really bad stumps. So, I don't think it would happen this game. They're both friends. They're both boys. When you're playing your homies, it's always got to be close, but I want I want to see Biff happen, man. Like, this is not this is more of, like, what I want to see happen more than, like, an, this is very biased, but... These end of the season predictions are going to be extremely biased because I want to see the lower end teams make the rise and I want to see the higher end teams make the fall. I want this playoff race to be fucking crazy. Obviously, besides me, I want to get the perfect season and I want to win at the ship. So, for all other 15 teams, if you're a top end team, I want you down. If you're a bottom end team, I want you up. So, yeah. These are... Uh, the very extremely biased playoff predictions, but I, they're not too cr like, like it would be extreme if I were to, no offense to these coaches, but it would be extreme if I were to say new beating Wu and Nick beating Tanner. I think we can all agree. So I think these are very within the realms of possibility. Will it happen? We don't know. But what I will say is that Bee's honey is really fucking good. Um, and also, this is probably the end of the video, um, but I guess I'll do a little, I did this in my personal video on my channel, after my game with B, talking about playoffs, so, well, it's more about me making playoffs. So, we can, uh, we can do like an end, we can do like a, uh, playoff picture, because, uh, Last time we did one was about like three, four weeks ago, and they, that got outdated real quick because Preston started losing a lot of fucking games. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, fuck it. I don't. I, I, once I stop recording, I got nothing to do. So let's uh, fuck it. Well, let's do another. Let's, let's do it. Let's do another playoff picture. Let's do one every week until we fucking get the playoffs. Cause this is this is exciting, man. This is really fucking exciting. So uh, let me go back. So for me to play eight. I need, right now it'd be Wu, but assuming he loses to MS, it'd be Tanner. So we got Monroe, Minans, yeah, West Side, Rafai. We got the Corterra Formers versus the the Athens Ash Ketchum. All right, and then top seed in the bottom would be Josh. We got the Salford Swablus. And then as of right now, I think it's Emnes leading between these teams. I know it would be Preston. But Emnes is leading division. So it would be 
that and that and then this would be last minute I knew Oh this would be Manchester missing news. This would be the Paldean Loki. Loki This is last minute when you This is how they poke humans. And then this is the terraformers and then this Athens ish catch em. That's right. Hey, we did it. Let's go. Okay. Sorry that took a little bit, but uh we're here now. Um alright. So as of right now, this is the assuming Wu loses this is assuming Wu loses to Mnaz, which who knows. Um that's for now. This is the playoff picture. Um, very exciting. Mm. We got me versus Tanner, which is the semifinals of last season, and the quarterfinals of this season, which is kind of crazy. Kind of, kind of crazy. Um, got Croc versus uh, Croc and Chris played yet. No, that's it. Bro, they would play back to back weeks. No shot. Oh. Honest to God, depending if Croc needs this win or not to make playoffs, I he has to throw this set. Curse and Croc have to throw this set. Because as of right now, that being the first week, of, there's no shot you show your actual sets a week before you have to play them again in the playoffs. There's no shot. There's no way. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, my God. That'd be fucking insane. Okay, so um, this is also assuming that Croc keeps up the momentum and, like, does it and that Chase doesn't take his spot. But, again, this is as of right now. This would be playoffs. Chase could very well steal Croc's spot. He could also steal Tanner's spot. Really, it's just a matter of whoever wins a vision in Tanner's division, whether it's Tanner or Croc, they're guaranteed, and then it's a matter of whoever is the loser, like doesn't win division, w whether it's Tanner or Croc, they are then in competition with Chase, which Chase can very well steal one of their spots. Um, so yeah, Chase, I could be playing Chase in the first round here instead of Tanner, or I could be, you know what I mean? Like, this playoff fixture could change, but this is as of right now with the teams how they are. It also could be Wu. We don't know. I kind of want it to be Wu. That way, three out of the four members in the playoffs on our side is from my division. Just division supremacy. But for the sake of having two and two, like two from my division and two from Tanner's division, uh, I would I would love to see Chase make playoffs over Tanner. Because Chase was very close last season, fell a little bit short in the playing tournament. I think this, like, Chase has... Chase's record doesn't reflect the season he's having because there's a lot of games this season, like my game against him and my, his game against Tanner the first time they played, where he should have won 100%. He just got kind of cheated out. He's having to make up in the end of the season for the shitty beginning of the season that Pokemon just gave him. And I really, I, I say this every season, I'm going to say it again. Chase is my favorite coach to predict in for playoffs because I feel like he's the dark horse every time he's he's got the dog in him he's got the dog in him Rocky he's got the dog in him like I could see Chase taking Croc or Tanner this seed right here 
belongs to Croc, Tanner, Chase, or Wu. And that's what I love. I love that it's very competitive. So, I'm very excited to see who I play going into playoffs. We won't know until we know, but God, would it be so fun to play Chase in playoffs. Granted, I probably don't want to play him because he, like, essentially beat me the last time we played. But, again, uh... I I would love to see the dog in playoffs. I would I would be very sad to be have to, to have to be the one to put him down. But God, I would love to see Chase in playoffs because he made it. I mean, everyone made it season one, so that's not really saying much. But season two just fell a little bit short in that playing tournament. It would be a great great way for Chase to really prove that he was a top coach this season by making playoffs over the dog Tanner. So yeah, or even the dog. Even the dog uh, Croc. We we don't know if Croc starts choking or not. We don't know. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is the top end of the bracket, bottom of the bracket. The same way Tanner spot at number eight is very contested. This number two spot for Mnaz is very contested. Um, could be B. Oh wait, no. I fucked up. I fucked up. Didn't I? I fucked up. Didn't I? Yeah, I did fuck up. Because Josh has the better record as of right now over Mnaz, so they would flop. Sorry, y'all. I made a little oopsie poopsie. Made a little Nikocado avocado. Alright. So, uh, I had to do a little flipping around there. But yeah, uh, so this actually gets a lot spicier because it would be two divisional matches again in playoffs between Josh and Preston and Emnaz and Noah. But again, this number three slot right there, that number three seed is so, so close. Like, it could be B, it could be Taz, it could be Emnaz. We know for sure it cannot be Noah, no matter what, it can't be Noah. But holy shit, would it be crazy. Whoever takes this seed, bro, oh my god, it's going to be crazy. Again, depending on how Preston's end of the season goes, whether it's, since Mnaz is in the lead right now, I'm going to say Tabs or B. Tabs or B could very well take Preston's spot. Very well could take Tabs or Preston's spot. Or Tabs or B could take Preston's spot. That's assuming Preston starts keeps playing not great. Um, but yeah, I think Josh is like me in my side of the division or my side of the con or my side of the league. I think Josh on his, in his conference, in the Hoenn conference, I think he's pretty set on number one. Um, he has very bipolar weeks where sometimes he does really good. Sometimes he kind of gets stomped, but I think if he just keeps the pace he's at, no one's going to catch him. The only person would be Noah, but again, Noah can't win out division. So no matter what, he can't take the spot from Josh. So, and again, since the division leaders between Tabs, B, and Mnaz are so close, no matter what, Josh is pretty safe in securing first seed. I'd be very surprised if Josh didn't win out first seed in this side of the conference. Uh, so yeah, I think me and Josh are pretty locked down. This, no one, no matter what, in my mind, has this seed on I think Josh and Noah spots as the first and third seeds they're like on lock like I don't think anyone's taking their spots um the interesting part just comes between Mnaz and Preston's spots right now because Tabs and B could just snatch them up right just like that and that's crazy that's really really crazy um the fact that we're in talks of the champion of last season not even making it to playoffs, that's crazy. Um, But that's just how Mnaz is, man. He struggles in the regular season, and then he's just got ice in his veins in the postseason, man. So, uh, for the sake of my mental, I would... Actually, I'm not going to bitch out. I want the Chin Pal in finals. Mnaz, you better make fucking playoffs because I want a fucking rematch. I don't want that belt to get shipped to my house if it's not from Mnaz, bro. I swear to God, I don't. Well, I mean, it's going to be Mnaz no matter what because if he doesn't obtain his belt, he's going to have to ship it to me. But 
it will not feel the same if I don't beat Emmez in the finals. It will just won't feel the same. So I want and I want my rematch, big dog. I I want my rematch. But yeah. Um realistically, if we're going with this bracket, I'm gonna give my predictions because again, I'm gonna go over it every week. Because again, we're only a month away. And if you really think about it, we're only like two weeks away. Because week ten, which is this week, divisional games. Week 12 is the last divisional game. So we're going to know who the division leaders are. Those spots are going to be unlocked, which again, this one and this one. Me and Josh were like kind of unlocked. I'd be very surprised if we didn't win out. But the Croc and Mnaz positions are in. They are. Ooh, they're spicy. So again, this is assuming this is the bracket going up. I am expecting the bracket to change up a lot. I'm expecting it to change up a lot. Um, but, yeah, assuming this is the bracket we get going into playoffs, I'm going to give my predictions. Me versus Tanner. Again, so one thing to note is that... <laughs> I hate that we did this, bro. All playoff matches are best of five sets. It's not just finals now. So quarterfinals and semifinals are best of five matches. If you make it to postseason, you're playing best of five. Me versus Tanner... Um, I had him last season in playoffs pretty strong. I just choked game two. I made a really terrible play, and we went to a game three. But that game, th like, that game three was never out of my reach of control, I feel. I felt very in control. And even game two, I felt very in control. I just underestimated Kecleon's damage through the burn, which is all my fault. I, I shouldn't have made that switch. So, playoffs, I had his number. This season, I... I had his no. I mean, the set was close. You know, I, like me, I never stomp out Tanner, but I when we played earlier this season, I very much had him in a position to where he couldn't. You know what I mean? Like I had him in a position where no matter what, as long as I just made the right play and sacked the right mon, I was gonna win anyway. So, considering that's how the last time we played went out, obviously he's made some trades. He dropped Roaring Moon for Arcanine, which does he bring against me? I don't know, but um, I feel confident in my ability to beat Tanner again if I were to play him. If I were to play Croc, Wu, or if I were to play Croc or Wu, I also feel pretty confident in my matchup against him. If anything, the one person I do not want to play in playoffs is Chase. Because, again, Chase has that dog in him. And he had, he had my number. He had my number. So, if anything, I'd rather play Tanner, Croc, or Wu than Chase because Chase had my number the last time we played. And why would you want to play someone that had your number? You know what I mean? I don't want him to call me mid game, start bozoing me. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, it, this is my game. I feel confident in my ability to beat Tanner. Croc versus, uh, Croc versus Chris. This is tough. Because I think this matchup is very, really, really, it's very, they play week 14. So, like, they're not, if this is the matchup going into playoffs, they're both throwing, if they play that game serious, they're out of their fucking mind. But assuming they troll that set and they go into this with, like, they don't know what each other kind of wants to do, um, this is going to be a good game. I think this is a game fiver. I don't see this being a 3-0 or a 3-1. I think this is a 3-2 win. <sighs> I feel like just the season Chris is having, I have to give it to Chris. That's not to take anything away from Croc. Because, again, even if he doesn't take this division leader spot, he very well is most likely going to take this spot and play me. Which he plays me. That's unlucky. Oh, fuck. Did I just make myself bleed, bro? I think so, but yeah, fuck it. But yeah, um, I think this will be Chris's. <sighs> Chris has made playoffs. I mean, he's making playoffs no matter what, right? So this will be Chris's third playoffs appearance. Season one doesn't say much. Uh, season two, 
He was in a very bad counter matchup against Emnez. He was in a very bad counter matchup against Emnez. He his Charizard X just could not break through the Rhyperior. He didn't really have a whole lot to break through Rhyperior. Emnez always had a switch for his offensive threat. So I think Chris, especially with the season he's been having, I would be very surprised. No matter what happens between in Tanner's division for this playoff spot and whoever I play. I would say with almost 90, I'll say 90% confidence, the semifinal is going to be me versus Chris. I would be, I'm going to say, I would be disappointed in Chris if it weren't me and him in the semifinals, just based on how his season is going. I, I would be disappointed. Do I want to play Chris in the semifinals? No, because he's a very scary matchup for me. And I think he's like the main threat in my way of getting the perfect season. Obviously, I still play some other really good coaches, but I think Chris is like the biggest threat to that right now. Um, and with the season he's been having, he's literally the second team in the league right now, right below me. I would be disappointed in Chris if he doesn't make it to the semifinals against me. So that's my prediction. I see me and Chris here. Uh, down here, if this is how we're to go... Um, Preston kind of bozo Josh. Like, matchup-wise, Preston's got his number. But, like, consistency-wise, I think Josh is the more consistent coach, which makes this at, at matchup interesting. Um, but, dude, like, if we go back to week, if we go back to week, if we go back to week eight, bro, like, Preston, like, stomped his shit. No, what, what week was it? Was it week six? Yeah, like, Preston, like, stomped. He curb stomped his shit, bro. Like it, it was bad. Um. So, I guess if this is the matchup, you kind of have to give it to Preston, though. No? I mean, they play one. I think they play week twelve, right? They play week twelve. Uh, I would be surprised if they played that set seriously, because um. Actually. It depends, because if Preston starts struggling towards the end of the season, he really, really has to rely on beating Josh to secure the division leader, right? Because if he beats JC, then he's 4-1, and one, and then if he beats Josh, he's guaranteed playoffs. So depending on how Preston's end of the season goes, he might very well play Week 12 seriously against Josh, and then that would mean that these spots would flip. So... Preston would take division leader, but then Josh, no matter what, if Preston wins, you know what, like, no, no matter what, this will maybe most likely be that if Preston doesn't win division, his spot is very much in jeopardy. But if Preston wins division, this matchup probably stays the same, except Preston just is the higher seed and Josh is the lower seed. But because again, I don't think B or T for B or tabs to make playoffs, they need they need Preston to just lose out. They need Preston to just lose to Josh and lose to JC and just lose the rest of his games. But if Preston were to win division, I don't see Josh falling out of playoffs to be your tabs. I'm sorry. That's just how I see it. So for tabs and B, they need, or even Emnez, right? Because Emnez, like he's in playoffs right now, but if he starts choking his division, he might not make it. So for Tabs, V, and Emnez, they need Preston to lose out because I don't see those three beating out Josh for the wild card slot. So again, if this is the matchup we get, I have to give it to Preston. Um, again, if Preston... So this is what I'll say. God damn, bro. This shit is bleeding, bleeding. Um, if um Preston... If Preston can afford to throw his game away against Josh, I think Preston has a good ch good chance of beating him in playoffs because he has the information war. But if Preston has to beat Josh to make playoffs, I think Josh has the edge because Preston, number one, has to beat Josh to even secure division, which is still a challenge. And even if he secures it, that means Josh has two losses to go off of to see how Preston beat him both times. And to lose to someone three times in a row in a season, that's very, like, it almost puts the pressure on the person who won because you've beat them so many times that they have so much opportunity to grow from 
that they can just counter your team in that third. Because, like, again, first two times don't matter. Second, you make playoffs. Regular season doesn't matter anymore. Once you make it to this stage in the season, who the fuck cares about regular season? At this point, it's just about winning three games. All coaches care about once you get to the end of the season is you have three sets. You have quarters, semis, and finals. Those are the only three sets of your life that matter. So, for that reason, matchup, I give it to Preston. Consistency, I give it to Josh. So, assuming Preston can make a little bit of a rebound, secure his playoff spot, I have Preston going to semis. It's not to take anything away from Josh. I think he's been way more consistent than Preston. I think... He's a great coach, has one of the best, honestly, he has one of the best teams in the league. But I think just based on how badly he got beat by Preston in week six, hard to not put Preston over him in this game. Um, and that is versus Noah. God, this can be a tough game. I think all these games are going to be like game five. Even my game against Tanner, like, or, or it's Croc, Wu, or Chase. I would be very surprised if any of the, even semis and finals, I'd be surprised if any of the playoff games didn't go to game five. I feel like the season's been way too close, way too competitive. I don't see any way where these playoff games don't go to five. So for me, these are all going to a game five, all of them. Um, so Noah versus Emez, close, close game. Um, as much as I want to give it to Noah, no, Emez beat Noah before. Has the potential to beat him again this week. And there's just something different about Emez in the postseason. His game against Chris didn't really matter as much because he just had great defensive checks to all of Chris's offensive answers. So there's not much Chris could have done. His game ag- I need y'all to understand. I don't give a fuck, okay? I don't care how long this video takes. I need the new coaches to understand what Emnaz in the postseason really did. Because, like, okay, so let me explain. Going into the postseason, going into the postseason, JC was the number one seed at 16 and 2, and I was the second seed at 15 and 3. Emnaz was like, Emnaz was 10 and 8. He was a middling team going into playoffs. He was, he was the gatekeeper of the high tier, because I was, Emnaz was, or JC was 16 and 2, I was 15 and 3, then Tanner was 13 and 5, and then Emnaz is the 4 seed at 10 and 8. And me, Emnaz and JC, me, Tanner and JC all beat Emnaz both times we played him. So for us going into playoffs we're like Emnaz is for sure a tough opponent, but we beat him both times pretty convincingly, so there's not much to worry about. But I need the new coaches to understand what Emnaz was doing in the postseason last season. Because it is, because like we talk about it all the time in the league, right? Like we talk about it all the time in the league. But I need, I need the new guys to understand what Emnaz in the postseason was really doing to people. Because y'all need to understand. Honest, oh, can take. I have to scroll down a lot. This is tournament games. Tabs versus okay, semifinal. Okay, I need y'all to understand something. Okay, so for quarterfinals and semifinals, there are best of three sets, and only finals is a best of five. So this is only a three game set. But I need we need to watch through this game together as a viewer and as a commentator. Okay, finals you can go back and watch those replays, whatever. Like I'm not me versus. Me versus Emnaz, I'm not going to take... Obviously, he outplayed me because he beat me and won. But there is... Uh, you, everyone that was around for Season 2 knows what I'm about to show. But I need y'all to understand what... And let's just play the video because I, I could go on for days about this. Okay, so let's just watch the video. Terrible lead for Emnaz Game 1 has to switch out. Knock off, knocks off the Rocky Helmet. I'm not I'm not gonna commentate too much. Y'all are gonna know when the play happens what I'm talking about. So if you guys can see the teams a bit, you can see how the coaches have like evolved their like play style, I guess, over the over the seasons. JC kinda like what he has now with Garganackle and like Appleton. Really likes the really super bulky unkillable walls like Guzzlord, Chansey, uh 
All that stuff. Oh, that's a bad play on this. You should just kill it on. You outspeed? I don't think Rhyperior outspeeds Guzzy. Yeah, no. But yeah. Um, I know this is, this is a little bit weird ending to the video, but I need the new coaches in Josh and Noah to understand what they have to potentially go up against in the postseason. So right here, we all thought the game was over here because JC with the Lumberry mimic you, great tech. I think this, it, I think he does sweep game one here. I think it was game two is when the play happened. I don't know, but I also don't want to skip over it in, until we see it. So I'm just gonna let the, I'm just gonna let it play out. So good plays from uh, Emnes. Good, really dealt with the mimic you well, even though he kind of let it get set up. Doesn't have a switch into Typhlosion. Scarf Typhlosion goes Burr. You know, it's game two. Yeah, obviously we all know what happened, so it wasn't this game, but yeah. Uh, I'm just going to let it play out anyway, because uh, you, ha you have to understand, JC was 16-2, and two, and in the award show, he won coach of the season. Like, JC was in prime position to win back to back the first two championships of big juice like y me tanner like everyone in the league we were all like dming each other like we cannot no matter who win no matter who wins right no matter who wins the season it cannot be jc because if he wins back to back seasons his ego is going to be through the fucking roof so ooh, see like this good knockoff tech on alex and to get through the chancy good that's the good tech Sci shock Oh my god, doesn't even kill. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah. Um, again, I'm just going to let it play out. I think it's game two when it happens, but I don't want to skip over it because it was just that crazy. You know what I mean? So, I think Typhlosion just cleans up the game here. I could be wrong, but I think that's how it ends. Okay, game's over. You know what I mean? So, we don't got to watch this. JNC Simulator, whatever. Game two. And this is Emnaz. Emnaz's season is on the line. Okay? Because it's a best of three set. And JC is match point. Match point. He wins his game. He goes to finals. He's in prime position to win back to back. And Naz, this is, I have a wall right here, okay? His back is against this motherfucker, bro, okay? His back is against this shit, okay? Y'all need to understand, okay? I'm a different when it comes to playoffs, bro. I become a different breed of hype. Okay, I, I need y'all to understand his back is against that motherfucker. Okay, y'all need to understand that. So, so great U-turn prediction. Starmy switches out. Um, good, good into the Coco. Do you U-turn again? Okay, bad play, bad play. It's all good. It's all good. I gotta make that. You have to when you're in season on the line performance. You have to play safe. So, okay, not a good play. Gets pincer free set up here, but he goes right period. Mega evolve knock off. Good rocky helmet chip. Okay, here we go. He goes Starmie. Oh, <laughs> this play is crazy. That play is crazy, bro. That play is crazy. You can no, bro. You cannot tell me any human makes that play but MS, bro. But, uh, oh my god. No, y'all need to understand. Y'all need to understand what on MS's team walls the pincher but the right period, bro. You could say Bronzong, but he's probably taking a lot from close combat. Like, y'all need to understand. Because he also had Typhlosion. So if he loses Rhyperior, he loses his Typhlosion answer too. Again, you have Jellicent, but then it's a free switch into Guzzlord. Like, y'all need to understand. Rhyperior... This, <laughs> in my... <laughs> that, play, that play is crazy. That play is crazy. Yeah, like... In my opinion, that is still probably the best play in Big Juice history. I have not... Okay, JC sacking Pinsir there. A little troll. Because he could have used it as a pivot sack to get into Mimikyu or Chansey. Don't agree with that play at all, but again, didn't really matter. Also, I will say, very fucking fruity behavior from JC looking back and not bringing a Defogmon 
into the semifinals of a fucking playoff match when you have a goddamn mega pincher on your team. Did you think he was just not going to get up fucking Hazard's dog? I, I don't know. Either way, there... I... This is why I'm excited for this season's playoffs because I need to say I need to see plays like this, bro. I need to see plays like this. The pop in the call when this play happened, the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. I need to see plays like this in this season's playoffs, bro. I swear to God, I do. I swear to God, I do. Yeah, Rhyperior pretty easily cleans up the rest of this set. And game three, there's some more great predictions, but that was the prime one that I wanted to show off. Just so y'all could understand. He loses Pincer there. Season's over. It's me and JC in finals. JC might have two rings at this point. We don't know. But that play to Megahorn the Starmie. League history. League history. So, whoever, if Mnaz makes it to playoffs, I have him making it to final. I'm just saying that right now. If Mnaz makes it to playoffs, I think we're having a rematch of Season 2. Do I want a rematch of Season 2 finals? I do and I don't. I do because I want to beat Mnaz and prove that I can beat him in finals. But I don't because, one, obviously, I got, a, I got pretty lucky the last time we played. I'm very lucky that he played very shit. And two... Um, just for like, just for the sake of diversifying champions, like, I don't want anyone to win back to back, unless it's me, you know, obviously, but I don't want anyone to win back to back, and I also don't want the same teams make it to the finals, you know what I mean, like, season one was JC and Tanner, and season two, they were in prime position to repeat that, and I didn't like that, but then it was me and Emnez, which is really cool, really interesting, Emnez is a new coach season two, and it was cool, season three, Obviously, I want myself to make playoffs, but for the sake of, like, different people making the finals, I would love to see not me and Emnaz make it, but if Emnaz makes it to playoffs, I don't know who you put over him to beat in, in this side of the... I, I, I don't know who you... Like, regular season Emnaz, yeah, sure, you can probably put these teams over him, but postseason? You, you can't convince me. You can't convince me. So... I guess that kind of spoils the rest of the bracket. Uh, but like I said, I think all games are going to Game 5. But if me and MS make playoffs, I am I am predicting a repeat of Season 2 Finals. Except this time, I think I will beat them. So yeah, that is uh, the video. Uh, I know it was very long. I didn't... We're going to do these brackets every week for the rest of the season. And then even after Week 14 is over, I'm going to do a playoff prediction... Obviously, I'm going to have myself winning the championship, but again, just for everyone else, I'd love to see everyone else's brackets. For coaches that don't make playoffs, for coaches that do playoffs, uh, do make playoffs, obviously, they're going to think they're going to win. I think I'm going to win, so you know what I mean? So, I want to see everyone's brackets. I'll probably make a text channel for bracket predictions closer to playoffs, but yeah. That is the video. Uh, again, and that's this slot right here. Preston slot right here. Then these two slots right here are very contested. These two slots, not so much because it's either these two teams. But this slot and this slot and this slot. These three slots right here is what I'm looking at. And that's Preston and Tanner's spot. I'm looking at those. So again, a little bit of a long video. But I, I had to show the new coach. I'm just, like, whether, because I don't expect everyone to watch through these entire videos, right? But for the new coaches and Josh and Noah, I need them to watch that Rhyperior play and tell me how they think they're going to beat that MS. I need them to let me know. I need them to let me know because I don't, I, I'm not convinced. So anyway, I, I, I know I said I had food in this video and I had like two Irish, by the way, Irish potatoes, the goat. Okay. But anyway, yeah, that's the video. I could go on talking about playoffs forever. I am very, very excited. Obviously, it is still a month away. We still have a whole month to go, but very excited. Playoffs is, uh, I guess, a heart pumping. So, yeah, I'll see you all later. Thank you for watching the uh, video.